my guest is Prerna Kirti, who is a fashion designer graduate from NIFT. She has worked as a de- designer, a merchandiser, and now teaches merchandising, fashion marketing, textiles, and history of art and fashion. Hi, Prerna. Welcome to my show. Hi, Vedant. Thank you for inviting me on your show. I think that I'm wearing a nice piece of clothing right now. Oh, yes. That's a very smart t-shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> Thank you. So, Prerna, I'm curious to know, what is the significance of fashion in our society? So, that's a very big question to answer. But when you speak, when you say fashion, what is it that comes to your mind? Clothes. Clothes, right? And over the years, clothes have been part of our history, right? Correct? And we start identifying people through their clothes. That means fashion has always been part of culture and history. Okay. And the significance is such that it has become a very integral part of our society now, which means, uh, say, for example, how do you recognize a person uh, from uh, uh, different parts of the world, different parts of the country? It's through their clothing, correct? Yeah. So that is one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is uh, fashion or style is actually one's personality. One would like to represent themselves through their clothing. So that is how uh, fashion and clothing is a very integral part of society and one's own life. So basically, fashion is important to let us know who we are and also let others know who we are, right? Exactly, right. That's true. I keep seeing in stores that there is a new fashion every few months. Why do we need to change the style so often? Okay, so like I just said, style means our own self, correct? Our representation. Now, uh, now let me give you an example. Say you are uh, living in uh, Chennai. That is, it is a humid com- uh, uh, weather there, correct? The weather is hot and humid. And whereas you go a little up north, say you're moving to Kashmir, Darjeeling or the Himachal, how is the weather there? It's colder. So what happens? You will have to change your style according to weather. So according to different geographical locations, also style keep changing. Now, because of which you'll find so many different styles in the store. Again, when we speak uh, kids of different age groups, say you're 12 and suddenly in a year or two, you're a teenager your sense of dressing is different. You start dressing in a different way, correct? Because of which, these are all various factors because of which style keeps changing so often in the stores. So it is not because somebody is just fancying to change it. It's not that. There are various different reasons for it. But in one country here, like there's so many designs. Not not just the style, but the design. Every few months, Every like two months, there's a new set of design. Yeah, that's because people like change in their lives. And this is one way of doing that. You bring in new things into your life. It makes people happier. Yeah. And secondly, there's so many uh, different uh, psychological aspects as well. So say uh, a 50-year-old woman dresses up different from somebody who's 25 years old. In terms of colors, in terms of cut, in terms of uh, the style of the clothing completely changes depending on the age group as well. So, and depending on your mood, say if you're very happy and chirpy, right? You might want to wear very bright clothes. And on days when you feel not so good, then you wear colors like blues and grays. That is the reason we have so many different styles in the store to cater to various different groups, different moods. With so many changes in fashion, is there a lot of wastage that happens? Oh, yes, there is lots and lots of wastage that happens. There's so much of uh, fabric that is wasted. And uh, you know the jeans that we wear? The yeah. den- so each jeans that you wear, each denim that you wear, actually goes through at least a minimum of 15 washes, which means there's so much of water being wasted as well. Wow. So, yes, there is a lot of wastage. But uh, people have realized this and they're trying to make amends to it like say for example if there's wastage in fab, uh, in of fabrics in the factory so we have a group of people who go collect all the waste fabrics and they try to 
uh, sew these fabrics into say bags or some clothing which is again given to the homeless people kids who are often so that is how people are also trying to make amends to whatever bad is happening because of the fashion industry there's loads of wasted right yes yes loads of it so in the oceans there's not only plastic but also like lots of piece from clothing clothing yes and also the you know the dyes that we use for uh, you know uh, for dyeing our fabric the toxic chemicals all of that also goes into the ocean oh no oh yes that's the sad part of it what are the skills needed to be a fashion designer okay so one has to be very very artistic and also have this creative ability of uh, understanding what is required and uh, understanding of fabrics because that is a very important thing we work with uh, fabrics day in and day out we work with trims trims in the sense buttons and hooks and laces so we have to understand all of this really well and next is as designers we need to know how we should how we can visually communicate our designs and ideas to our clients so these are of course drawing is a very integral part of it and along with drawing uh, we also need to have little skills of uh, softwares like photoshop adobe illustrator these are basic bare minimum skills that any fashion designer should have can can one make a make their own piece of clothing at home can one of make course. their own t-shirt of course one can do that t-shirt i'm not very sure but yes you can make your own shirt or like your mom can make a dress for herself you can make a trouser for yourself definitely you just need one basic skill and that is uh, knowing how to sew my grandmother knows it. oh that's cool she can teach it to you then yeah okay she actually made some of my masks my grandmother oh that's awesome in fact a lot of people started doing that uh your uh, initial question of what do you do with the wastage of fabrics so a lot of people have started making masks out of the waste fabrics actually that's good yeah what do you enjoy most about teaching students it's the interaction with them i get to learn so much from them and plus if i have to teach something i have to be uh, you know on my toes all the time so there's constant research that i keep doing understanding what is happening in the industry new developments that's happening So that's the fun part of it. Research has always been my favorite thing. Buying new clothes makes us happy, but is there more of a dark side to it? Anything in excess, so is always bad. Anything in excess is always bad. So that is what happens. So you just can't keep buying clothes on and on and on, right? You must understand where you should stop and is it required for your necessity? Because, like you asked me about. uh how the garment industry is actually uh, you know polluting lot of uh, uh environment around us so it is very important that we are conscious about it and when we buy clothes we understand all of these things in fact there's a new thing called uh, sustainable fashion so what is sustainable fashion as a buyer you should be responsible and how will you be responsible is simple so if you are picking a clothes for yourself a garment for yourself you must understand question yourself is it really necessary okay and if you think it is then you must again your second question should be am i going to wear this for at least 20 times in my life which means the garment should go through minimum of 20 washes so that is what is sustainable fashion so understanding uh, if it is really necessary for you and how you are going to use it not just wear it once and then dump it that is not a responsible uh, sustainable person in in the store here called uniqlo in singapore they have these bins for used clothes and then uh, if it doesn't fit you anymore put it there and it goes to poor people homeless people orphanages oh that's a nice concept i know some of my friends who started doing that in hyderabad as well uh, actually i would like to add one point here uh i think when we were young i'm sure your mom and your father can relate to it so uh, if we had elders somebody who's older than us and if they outgrew their clothes those clothes would come to us 
so that's how we maintained it but these days very few parents do that and the more you do that the more you're actually helping the environment well yeah i've actually i actually like some of my father's t-shirts so sometimes i ask him can you keep it for me yeah you'll have to grow long the taller for that though <laughs> is there anything my listeners could keep in mind while buying new clothes of course like i just mentioned please question yourself do you really need that garment are there some brands better than the others that's a personal choice you know again when you are picking a brand it could be because of the fabric that they are using the cut that they have the fit that they have so it's all personal choice in terms of sustainability which one is the best see i am very uh, conservative that way so i go pick my fabrics and stitch it myself so that's the most sustainable way of making your clothes but otherwise when you are picking clothes when we speak of sustainable cottons anything which is natural is always good don't go in for too many of synthetic fibers synthetic fabrics because that is where you're using a lot of chemicals actually try to stick to anything that's natural say a linen a cotton a silk for that matter again silk uh some people will not prefer it because you know you again have to boil the silk worms and all of that but personal choices like i said try to keep yourself as natural as possible i most of my clothes are cotton only my running clothes are like synthetic yes so uh the difference is so when you are uh working out you're running right what happens you're perspiring a lot you're sweating a lot so your fabric should be breathable because of which it's a mixture of cotton spandex so it's a combination of two three different kinds of fibers so your garment becomes breathable and it's it doesn't get wet fast even if it does then it dries off soon you have helped with skill development and empowerment of rural and urban women can you tell me more about that Oh yes. Uh so uh while I was working on this project I got an opportunity to travel to lot of small towns in our country in India. And that is when uh, we realized that women do not have the power of uh basic uh rights, very simple thing like education. Okay? And second most important thing for any person be it a man or a woman is a financial independence. and that is something that we never see in our country especially in very small towns uh so through these uh, rural development programs what we try to do is teach a skill to women simple skills like sewing or embroidery tie and dye block printing so what happens is when you know or you uh, you are able to do something create something by yourself which means you can uh start earning for yourself as well it means you can be independent do not have to depend on anybody else you can have a better life you can educate yourself better same thing will happen if you are a married woman with children you are able to support your family and your kids as well so this is what we try to do with the skill development program for women in the rural uh, parts of the country that's really good because i saw that in the olden days that women weren't allowed to vote and now they are so i think that they should also be allowed to have education what made you choose to do fashion designing what did you want to be as a child okay so i as as a child i had uh, i kept changing my dreams every year but there was one constant dream and i think uh, my first thing was to be a teacher i don't know why but i always wanted to be one and the second was uh, to be a strong independent woman somebody who could travel educate people and i think so far i've been able to achieve my dreams i juggled a little as an entrepreneur and now i'm totally dedicated to teaching fashion so yes i think i have sort of achieved my dreams and fashion designing because i never wanted to be an engineer or a doctor So the only other thing for me was fashion designing then. Do you enjoy your job? Oh yes, I totally enjoy and love this job. That's good. What are your hobbies? Uh I like to sketch and paint and read a lot of books 
of course, travel to new places, learn about different cultures. So these are very simple hobbies. Swimming is one of them. Yeah, that's it. Those are really nice hobbies. Even I like them. Yeah, that's cool. I go swimming like at least twice a week. Awesome. That's very nice. And for once is my swimming lesson, which is like one hour. And then other times it's my friends. And then I'm like, I just stay in the pool for like two, three hours. Oh, so you're totally a water baby. Yeah, I love swimming. That's nice. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you, Vedan. It was lovely speaking to you. Yeah, this was fun. I learned a lot. And this was fun for me as well. This is the first time I've been interviewed by a nine-year-old, which is really, really cool. Mm. I'm sure your parents are very, very proud of you. They are. That's nice. <laughs> Dear listeners, follow my Facebook page, Curious Vedan, to get updates on my upcoming episodes. To listen at leisure on your phone and get notified about future episodes, subscribe by searching for Curious Vedan wherever you get your podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also listen to my show on CuriousVedan.com. The new website is up. Please make sure to go to it. Thank you for listening to Curious Vedan. And don't forget to repeat.